you know, I upgraded my morning pretzels recently. I got actual, um, or not pretzels, sorry, bagels. I got actual pretzel salt, um, you know? So the, be, the best salt to use on bagels is pretzel salt because the chewy bagel contrasts beautifully with like the, the like chalky texture of a, of a pretzel, um, pretzel salt grain. And, um, and I've gotten it. It's very good. Salt? Yeah, my favorite, my favorite type of bagel is when there's salt on the underside of the bagel and cream cheese on top. That's my favorite type of bagel. Um, back when I was in university, I would order one of those, like, every day from the cafeteria. Salt in a bagel? Yeah. It's not, it's not that weird. Um, I mean, I don't think so. I thought you were on a diet? I am. That's 400 calories. That's, um, that's a little over, that's like 20% of my daily caloric allotment covered right there. Uh, right in the morning. Trader Joe's has an everything but the bagel seasoning. No, I don't, I don't like the everything seasoning. I always felt like, um, everything seasoning on bagels was just like, I mean, it's, it's like, it's, it's like overkill, right? Like, I, it, it's a breakfast food, you know? I would just want a nice, simple, straightforward flavor palette. I think I'm okay with it later in the day, like the everything bagel or like all that crazy seasoning, but it, or like early on, I just, you know, like a nice, simple, I, I eat the same breakfast every day just because when I've just woken up, you know, like my, I got a little tummy rumble because I just woke up, you know, like a little, little groggy. I just want like the same, I just want like a nice start of the day and then we're good, you know, and then the rest of the day is fine uh, for, for whatever. How does the salt stick to the bottom? Uh, a little bit of butter, like a tiny bit, you know, um, usually I just have like a stick of butter in the fridge that I just run over the underside of the bagel that's right out of the toaster and that's fine. It adds like two calories. It's just like uh, it's 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 not even like a brush glaze or whatever. It's it's like a incredibly small amount of butter. D pack would end you for this take. What? Why? What? What? Ab what about D pack would give him a special insight on bagels? You want to continue that, huh? I grew up in Beverly Hills. Okay, I grew up with the greats. You know how many great bagel shops there are in Beverly Hills, in between the synagogues. God bless them. Yeah, bagels are amazing. Oh, you know what's um, you know what's really good on bagels? Lox. Speaking speaking of synagogues, you know, um, lo or the um, or like uh, albacore. Actually, I take it back. I think albacore is even better than lox. You know, you can get it sometimes, like the dehydrated, like strips of very salty fish that you can get at the grocery store. You just get like a little bit of that on top of the cream cheese. Insane, insane. Um, your bagel pizza. Well, hold on. Anyone who's disagreeing with me right now hasn't tried it. Like, I'm not kidding right now. Anyone who's like, the you would eat salted fish on a bagel? Like, you're literally a fucking infant right now. Like, you're like in chat right now. Uh, the, you would put the pee pee in your mouth to suck on it? That's so gross. Like, you're such an infant. Your, your brain is tiny. You have no life experience whatsoever. You've never eaten food. Someone said capers? Cap capers can be good. Is it the raw salmon? No, 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 no. No, I'm talking about albacore. Like like cooked salted it's like it's like fish well it's not like jerky it doesn't have the texture of jerky but it's it's like a you know it's like very smoked fish the steak is so hot that a news anchor would tell you to stop mentioning it yeah nice yeah smoked yeah are you thinking of herring no I, i'm talking about albacore well isn't that a th yeah albacore is a type of tuna but it's like a special type let me Google, like, smoked albacore. See if I can find... Yeah, it looks like this. Oh my god, it's so f***ing delicious looking. Holy shit. It doesn't even... It doesn't even look like fish, really. Like this. You can get, like, um... You, you can get, like, like kind of like a brick or a wedge of it at some grocery stores. And you, you slice it up a little bit. And it's, like, very dense, very tasty meat, you know? Like a brick? Well, because it's smoked, so it contracts because of the heat and the lack of moisture. Smoked meat? <sighs> like here. This isn't, this isn't the kind that I would buy, but this is what it looks like when you cut it up. Like, it's, it's, not very, it's not very moist, which is why you have it with cream cheese. It's like strandy. It, it's, it, it tastes a lot like, um, I don't know, man, cured pork? I don't know. It's really good. You're right that it's good. You're wrong about what it is. It's, it's smoked albacore. That's what it is. Looks like barbecue pork ribs. Yeah, but it doesn't... Barbecue pork ribs are really juicy. These aren't juicy. You guys know what happens when you smoke meat, right? It, it does like this. You get like an outer crust, 
and it's very dehydrated, and the grain of the meat, like, gets denser to, to fill in the space left by the evaporated moisture inside, and it gets, like, really salty. Well, you have to, like, season it. But, like, yeah, it's, it's like smoked meat. It's really good, and a little goes a long way, too. Very powerful flavor. Um, nobody cares. Whatever. Smoked meat's old news. They got vaped meat. Oh, yeah. When are you going to become a grilled dad? Oh, I'm actually, like, a huge bitch when it comes to dealing with, um, cooking meat IRL. I get all of, every, every time I'm lo I look at, like, a raw chicken breast, I think about veganism. It's, it's pretty much inevitable that I move over on that. I don't know if I'll ever go, like, fully vegan or whatever, but some vegetarian shit or something, I don't know. Literally yesterday I was saying, like, I can't play Stray because I'll cry. Because you play as a cat that's alone. I can't, like, I, yeah. I'm, I'm unashamed of my predisposition. It's a good game? I'm sure it is a good game. I'm not besmirching the game. Charcoal or propane gills? Gills. Grills. Uh, obviously charcoal. Memes aside. The great tragedy of Hank Hill is that despite his passion, he's, he's repping the objectively incorrect. Um, like the objectively incorrect barbecue, cooking, whatever, uh, you know, medium of, of heat delivery. But it burns so clean. You don't want a clean burn. You want the, ch the charcoal smell and the, the, the effect. That's what smoking meat is. That's why you barbecue it. If you're just if you just are going to cook it with burning gas, then you might as well do it on a goddamn stove top. Like that's the thing that makes barbecuing good. <laughs> you you have the additional people tend to use liquid smoke through that fast. Well, or you or you could use like charcoal. Gross charcoal smell? What do you mean gross char dude? If you're walking around outside and somebody nearby is doing a barbecue, the smell of charcoal is, like, fucking delicious before they even put the, the food on there. Yeah, because you throw in cedar chips or, like, uh, some of those, like, fragrant wood chips or whatever. But even the charcoal on its own, it's like you smell that and it's like, ah, someone's, get someone's getting ribs today. And it smells good. Who that? What? Who? Whoa. Artemy, do you want to explain your behavior yesterday? Do you want to explain it? He doesn't want to explain it. Why were you doing that, Artemy? Why were you being so annoying? Oh, oh, he's trying to escape. He doesn't want to say. He doesn't want to say. <laughs> he pleads the fifth. What about wood chunks? I, I, I just think it's better for any kind of like physical medium outside of gas. Do you want to know the real secret to doing a good job cooking with charcoal or whatever else, you know? The real secret is, if you're on a grill, you have to have two sides, okay? You have the hot side and the cooler side. Gather more of the charcoal onto one side and stoke the heat on that side, and then have, like, a lighter, like, simmering side, like, on the left and the right and stuff. And then that way you can switch it between, like, maintain on one side and, like, actively cook on the other. And that way you don't worry about shit getting cold the nanosecond it's done on the grill. Because the big problem with grilling for a party is that, like, they'll have the entire thing lit up like a furnace, they'll cook the burger or the hot dog, and then they're like, all right, done, and they'll slap it on a paper plate. And then it's like, if somebody doesn't get to that right then, it's going to get cold in, like, no time. Because it's outside, the wind's blowing and shit, you know? Um, you want to be able to move it over to, like, the simmer side. You can even have nothing burning on the underside over there. You can just let the heat from inside the grill keep everything warm. And, th and that way you can keep everything maintained. Um... Yeah. You're talking about food so much. I'm so hungry. You owe me lunch. I'm sorry. Charcoal gil uh, grilling is carcinogenic. Life is carcinogenic. Also, how carcinogenic is charcoal grilling, really? Cooking with charcoal does have a link to cancer. There are two main reasons for this. Maybe this is what Hank Hill means when he says that uh, propane burns clean. Wait, why this article right here on Healthline.com is talking about um, whether or not it's a carcinogen to grill with charcoal, but then a lot of this is about non-charcoal things. Cut back on red meat and processed meat, grill more vegetables, grill at lower temperatures, and don't charm meat. I get, like, if you burn your food, it's more likely to give you cancer. Don't burn your food. Yeah, I guess. Reduce cooking times. Marinate the meat first? What? Wait. 
Marinating meat or fish for at least 30 minutes before grilling because it can lower the formation of HCAs? Marinating your meat can reduce the risk of cancer? I didn't know that. Huh. Okay. Well, fat is what causes meat to drip and create the smoke responsible for PAHs. Wait, not the charcoal itself? It's the... Look, just don't inhale gigantic fucking whiffs of black smoke from your charcoal grill, and I think you're going to be okay. Don't, don't like, incinerate giant lumps of meat, and don't, like, huff the, the smoke. Don't tell me what to do. Yeah. That's part of the experience. Nah, dude, that shit sucks. If it's a hot summer day outside, and some fucking dipshit opens up the, um, the grill when there are people around, and then the wind catches it, and you get, like, eight fucking smokestacks of, of, of smoke directly into your lungs, and it's already really hot, and then you get blasted with that? Holy shit, that hurts. That's really, that's fucking annoying. You ever done Korean barbecue? Um, yeah. You know what the problem is with Korean barbecue? The real problem is white people, because there are so many soy-faced white people in LA who will do Korean barbecue, and because they're, 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 they're soy-facing over the fact that it's K-barbecue, they don't care what the quality of the ingredients are, so they make famous these, like, shit fucking joints that charge $20 for a platter of the lowest quality, like, beef in the universe. And then, like, you, these white people are, like, having a grand time smashing beef against their little grill plate um, f with no flavor at all. And they're eating it. They're like, dude, it's authentic. K-Barbecue, you know. There are good K-Barbecue places. Um, there's one in particular in LA I'm really fond of, but I forget the name. Um, but a lot, a lot of them, like, the ingredients are not good. Like, they're pretty low quality, but people go for it anyway, because, yeah. It's kind of like pizza, though. Even bad pizza's good. No. Bad K barbecue is not good, okay? That, just because you're cooking it yourself doesn't make it, like, tastier. The ingredients have to be good. In fact, it's even more important that the ingredients have to be good, because you're making it, right? Like, you can't rely on an excellent chef to dress up bad ingredients to make it all, like, palatable. It, it, it has to be good when you cook it, you know? Um, I'm, willing to I'm willing to be charged a bit more, given the, like, uh, spectacle of the restaurant, but, yeah, sometimes these, these places are just like, you know, yeah, here's the $50, like, round plate. Here are, like, six trays, each of which contain two ounces of meat that you could get from, like, the, the, the dumpster behind a jack-in-the-box, you know? Like, what the fuck are you trying... Oh, it's because I'm white. You think I won't complain? Ah, I see. I, yeah, you know. The fucking K barbecue chefs are out there bringing the real ingredients to their non white patients, you know? Or patients, what the fuck? Customers? Because they know the white people are just going to soy chug their way through it all? Quality of that meat, I'm going to be a fucking patient before long. Yeah, I was thinking patrons, yeah. Body betrays you, degeneracy. You guys know what I'm talking about, though, right? If it's, if it's good, though, it's good. Unironically, same with some Japanese sushi places. You have to understand, okay, a huge amount of money... Now, this isn't the case with KBBQ in LA, because it's LA, but in a lot of the world, a lot of the money that people make in developing countries, like, over there, comes from tourism and tourists. Uh, when, when whiteies go over there, and they're like, dude, and they spend, like, the equivalent of a month's salary in that country on, like, some something, you know? Swindling Westerners is a critical part of the economy of a lot of people's, like, like a lot of people's nations. It's, it's like, there are, there are a lot of people who rely day to day on like, I hope, I hope white people don't have a, 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 a full understanding of the actual worth of this product or service relative to its, you know, the, the resources it took to produce and time it took to master, you know. How is it swindling? What the fuck? Um, because they expect people to pay more because they're, um, wealthier and they don't have the cultural context to know the worth of stuff. It's not like I feel bad for them, you know? I mean, that's, it, it, this is a good problem to have. If your problem as, like, a culture is we have so much money that when we travel to poorer countries for our vacations, they charge us more, that's a good problem to have, you know? That's, like, that's not the worst thing to have to deal with. Um, I'm not, I'm not shitting on, on anyone for doing this. It's definitely a thing. It can have some rough side effects in the local area. Oh yeah, for sure. There are always consequences. There are always consequences. COVID was really hard for them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. What's your favorite food? Come on, more food take. No, 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 Stop. We're only, we're only doing this shit right now because I'm mad at chat for lying to me about fucking Jan 6. 
All you do is talk about meat and pussy on these streams. Great, good. Happy, happy to be the one man in all of Left Tube. Thank you. Happy to be the meat and pussy guy. Good. Yeah, great. It's my fucking market. Best cut of beef? I don't know. I don't like fat in any of my meats, though. I don't like marbled anything. I don't like any fat. I would prefer, like, dry to, to fatty. I just hate the texture of fat in my mouth. That's where the flavor is, though, what? Yeah, can we be real for a second? Fat isn't where the flavor is. You guys realize that, right? Like, it's actually not. Fat is like a flavor distributor. When there's fat in, uh, like, a piece of meat or whatever, it's like the same as, um... It's like the same as when you put, uh, onions in, like, a soup or whatever, right? The onion flavor isn't like, oh, yeah, it's onion flavor. It's more like... What's the term? When you make a roux? It's like, um... It's it's like a, a a physical process for for ensuring like a, a a flavor distribution. You're so wrong. No, I'm literally not. It literally like if if you're eating meat, like you've marinated, cooked it, whatever, cut off a bit of fat at the end and eat that. It's not any more flavorful than the meat itself. It's actually less flavorful. The reason the meat is there and kept, the reason marbled steak is like valued, is because um the um the 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 fat adds like this um this like like oily liquidation that allows the flavor to permeate you know it's like the difference between like you know how if you're eating like a dry food it's possible for the lump of food in your mouth at the top to be seasoned and at the bottom to not be seasoned but that's not the case when it's like um it's not the case when it's like more liquidy because things distribute more in like the flavor no you're wrong bud <sighs> Bosh actually objectively correct. Them. Yeah, but nobody, like, they don't care. Like, they're, ju they're just, they heard when they were, like, eight years old, the fat brings the flavor, and they're just going to keep repeating that without any, like, yeah, so, so yeah, I'm, like, I'm wrong because they heard it when they were, like, their balls hadn't dropped yet. Fat cells absorb oils better and thus transfer flavor more easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The purpose is to, like, distribute the flavor profile. You can tell. Like, this is, um, if you eat a dry cut of meat versus, like, a more moist cut of meat, like, you can literally tell the difference. A good example would be, uh, cake. Have you ever had, like, um, have you ever had, like, uh, like a bite of cake where you have, like, the frosting on top and then it's really, like, dry for the actual body of the cake? It, when you actually bite that, when you eat it, the frosting at the top is like there, and the rest of the cake is just like this spongy, like whatever in the median. But if it's um a milk, uh, if it's a milk-soaked cake, I forget what the term for that is. If there's some kind of liquid, fatty medium running through it, when you bite it, it all kind of mashes together into a uh, tres leche, yeah, into like a single flavor profile. You 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 know what I'm talking about, right? Like this is just a property of moisture and fat in food that we eat it 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 transfers and distributes i'm not like a food scientist i don't know exactly why that is but like that's what it does fat does have its own flavor i know fat has its own flavor but it's not where the flavor comes from it distributes flavor that's present in the meat the meat is absolutely the more flavorful part you can tell cut off a bit of dry meat versus like just fat on its own you can easily tell where the flavor is it's just that when they go together, that's how you, like, appropriately circulate the flavor in the meat. That's why people play, uh, praise Wagyu so much. It's well marbled with fat, so it's tender and flavorful with hardly any seasoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, that's why um, the whole melt-in-your-mouth thing, like, that's a, a whole part, like, the huge part of it, you know? But if you actually, like, here's the real secret, okay? Because I've had Wagyu, all right? Um, if you have, like, a cut of Wagyu, and you also have a cut of, like, regular fucking Walmart steak or whatever... And both of them, well, I guess not really necessarily, like season them to the same extent or whatever, and you take a bite of both, the flavors are not that different. It depends on a bunch of factors. You know, the quality of meat in Wagyu tends to be higher, so it'll taste better on its own, but the flavor isn't the critical distinction. People don't get Wagyu for the flavor. They get it for the texture. It's the experience of eating the Wagyu that cha like that makes that elevates it, you know? It's the melt-in-your-mouth thing. That's why people say with Wagyu, it's that melts in your mouth, which is amazing, by the way. But it's not the flavor, you know? Now, my issue with fat in steak is that I hate the texture of fat. So since texture is technically the element that fat adds for distributive purposes of the flavor, if I don't like the texture of the fat, I don't... It, it does nothing for me. It's I don't want it, you know? I would rather just get, like, bites of meat and just like the taste of the meat. Because what fat would do through texture would would be to 
to I don't know emulsify the distribution of this is such a stupid stun lock. Well, I... <sighs> so is a guy who doesn't give a shit about texture only lives for flavor. Wagyu's not the thing to buy. Now, wa for, Wagyu still tastes better because of the quality of the meat. Also, you do want the texture of Wagyu. Um, you do. Everyone does. It's really, really good. Vosh likes his steak well done. No, I don't. Don't lie. That's one of the reasons why people like their, um, their, their steak, like medium or whatever, or like rare. You guys ever wondered about that? You guys do know that, like, r like rare steak isn't more flavorful than steak that's, like, medium well, right? The reason why the, the rare bit, the red in the middle, is really good is because that's providing the moisture that allows the flavor to, like, emulsify. It's the juiciness. That's the reason why, yeah. So if you have, like, a well-done steak chunk and, like, a medium rare steak chunk, the flavor might actually be uh, stronger in the uh, well done. The problem is that you're eating fucking charcoal. Like, because there's no juiciness in the meat that's well done, like, you're just biting off, like, crumbles of steak sand, which, which like, sucks. Like, the flavor itself isn't just... That's not the whole part of it, right? But the if it's rare, there has to be... It has juiciness in the middle, you know, from the, from the, un, from the uncooked, like, muscle tissue. I've never had well done. It looks disgusting. I actually think that, like, in some contexts, uh, meat, beef that's like overcooked can be tasty, but not for not for steak. You know, steak is meant to be like a nice slice with like a good like red center or whatever. You know, that's yeah. This is why you don't lose low fat content. Um, ground beef for burgers, they fall apart and be dry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't want you don't ever want like um. 90% meat, 10% fat, ground beef for burgers, it falls apart. Um, it's, there's lit, like, there's not even enough fat to hold the burger together. It's also why you don't ever want to season your meat before forming the burger patty. You season the patty after you formed it, because you don't want all the salt and pepper and seasoning to break up the bits of meat after you formed it together. Um, yeah. But if you're making, like, a taco, like, taco seasoning, like taco meat or whatever, it can be, like, 90% meat, yeah. It's why you often mix uh, pork and beef to make burger. Yeah, yeah, because the fat content. Yeah. Um, fajita meat, well done, is great and thin. Yeah, like uh, like skirt steak type stuff. Yeah, like little like strips can be well done, and that's really good because it's like it's like a little strip. You know, like if you're eating like um little fajita bits or whatever, like you don't need a little red, uncooked bit in the center of every single one. That's not really practical. Um. <laughs> Why do you think it's ethical to eat meat? Well, wait, nobody thinks it's unethical to eat meat. People think it's unethical to harm animals, to, um, to get meat. All right, I'm glad we had this talk. Have you ever had steak tartare? Yeah, yeah, a couple times. I actually had one pretty recently, too. Um, hell yeah, Mr. O. Have you tasted impossible meat? I've had the Beyond Beef. I thought it was pretty good. Vegan substitutes for food have come so far in the past uh, decade or so. You know, vegan cheese used to not even melt it would just burn. Yeah, it was like paper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, skunksy for sure. Yeah, like a vector. Would I eat lab-grown meat? Yeah, sure. Lab-grown meat's cool. Um, like in concept, it's it's getting a while. You're rich and lab-grown meat is expensive. Can you buy some and tell us how it was? I don't even I don't even know the extent to which it's commercially available these days. Please say you don't eat poutine. What the fuck is wrong with eating poutine? Also, I'm like not far from the Canadian border. There's a lot of poutine available in Seattle. Poutine's great. Will I eat the bugs? I will not eat the bugs. Poutine sounds valid, but I haven't had any. I mean, it's literally, like, it can be made in a bunch of ways, but generally speaking, it's just french fries with gravy and, like, is it, what is it, is it goat cheese? What's the, what's the cheese? Is it cottage? Cottage cheese? What, what's the, oh, cheese curds, that's right. I just remembered, like, white and clumpy. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, cheese curds, yeah. Um, they're really good, yeah. Really, really good. Never had poutine after I, until after I started dating my current partner. Holy shit, I was missing out. Yeah, it's really good, yeah. I'm not eating bugs, guys. Yeah, sorry, Vermin. There's this place on Capitol Hill in Seattle called Skillet um, that has um, really, really, really good... What are they called? Apple Martini? Was it Apple Martini or Mimosa? What was the drink? What was I getting White Girl Wasted on, Vermin? I'm waiting to be informed on what I was getting White Girl Wasted on. Those are different things. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I don't have a good memory. I just know there was, like, Apple... Apple mimosa, yeah, that shit was fucking dope, dude. Holy shit, there was like cinnamon on the rim of the drink, and um, oh god, it's so good. I love fruity drinks. I love the faggiest drinks in the universe. Okay, I might be a top, but my my alcoholic 
preferences scream bottom. Okay. Oh god. There's the place it's called Skillet. They've got really good poutine there. Not traditional poutine, but like, you know, good poutine. Fruity drinks are so good. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I um not Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, vermin for sure. I, I recently went to like a block party on Capitol Hill where all the homosexuals were, and there was like some cool shit there that I would look at, and I like was wandering around. And I, I wanted to get white girl wasted, you know? I wanted to make bad decisions. I, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to, to, to don't stop, pop it, drop, till the party don't stop it, wow, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And um, those motherfuckers at, at Unicorn were, I swear to God, they were distilling the drinks, dude. I swear to fucking God they were watering them or whatever. Probably because they had some vendor set up or they didn't want people acting like drunk belligerent assholes. But the first time that I got the drinks there, I had got one and a half, and I was sloshed, and that's when fucking Russia invaded Ukraine. The first time I had those drinks, I, I had them, like, right as the fucking missiles were being fired across the Donbass. Um, and then, um, and then I, and then I went back a little while ago, and I had three whole of their drinks with, before eating any food that day, and it only got me mildly drunk. I swear to God they were cutting down on the alcohol content. That it tasted like fucking lemonade. Here's their booze menu to show chat. Yeah, link it. <clears throat> and see why I like this place. I hung out here with um, the drunken peasant guys and Adam and uh, um, Adam from YMS and um, Jeff Holiday. The food here is so fucking good. I need to get drunk again here. Where's the alcohol? Booze. Ringmaster, Tipsy Peach. Where's Unicorn Jizz? Cheap Date, Capri Sun. Unicorn Jizz, right up here. Like I said, I'll go for anything that has citrus, okay? My shit was the... Um, the pink flamingo, I think. I'm getting gentrified just looking at this menu. Ah, it's Capitol Hill. That that fight is long lost. Absolutely. Unicorn is a gay bar for straight people. Well, thankfully, I'm heterosexual, so <clears throat> ten bucks for a shot. Well, it's like eleven bucks for the cocktails, and I'm telling you, I was sloshed after having one and a half of those the first time when they weren't watering it down. You know, eleven ain't too bad. That's like eighteen bucks for me to get. D f destroyed, okay? That was a whole... That's that's good. Yeah, shots are expensive. Biden speech in five minutes. Can't trust chat. Can't trust chat. Vosh is a lightweight. Yeah, I am. How's your tolerance been since losing weight? It's hard for me to tell because before I started losing weight, I was still alcohol intolerant and couldn't get drunk at all. 